Hello, salut de la monde. My name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to another section on key great varieties, Syrah or Shiraz. This is the advanced version. So this is the in-depth version going through the history, the uh, um, uh, vineyard capabilities of Syrah as well as wine making and then what it tastes like. There is a beginner's version, which is much shorter if you wish to uh, look at that one. So a little bit about where Syrah comes from. Um, it is in fact a, a variety which is fascinating because it's had a lot of uh, miscommunication about where it's from. Um, and with uh, ampelography and uh, grape DNA, we've actually found that, uh, and this was a study at the UC Davis, the University of California, Davis, uh, where we studied in the late 90s that in fact Syrah is really a grape of the Rhone and the Alps because its parents are the Mondeuse Blanche variety, which is uh, only grown a little bit now. It's much more around Mondeuse Noir, which is uh, another type of variety from Savoir. And then Doretha, which is a variety from the Ardèche. So it is very likely if you place Savoir and then the Ardèche in between, you really have the Rhone Valley. So we do say that it is from, therefore, very much around the uh, the kind of Rhone Alps area. Um, now, that means, of course, all the previous stories about Sierra and Shiraz have been uh, made false. So these are incorrect. This is things around uh, that maybe Sierra comes from Syria because of its name, although there are some vines found there. Uh, it is not from there. Shiraz in the ancient uh, city of Persia. Uh, that was one uh, hypothesis put forward. And then Syracuse, which is a city on the eastern side of Sicily, the Mediterranean's largest island. Uh, and that's really about sharing the name Syra, Syracuse. And there are many other hypotheses as well. Um, that is why th there is a, a synonym name, which is Shiraz, because there is a link to these other hypotheses. Uh, but it is not true. The variety is from France originally, and it is from down from the Alps in the Rhone Alps zone. Um, and through a lot of these studies, they have found out, and certainly from linking the variety to Taroldago in northern Italy, um, we have actually found out that the variety is related to uh, Pinot Noir. Uh, so Pinot Noir is a, uh, is a great grandparent of Sierra. Uh, so there is definitely lineage that would suggest that, you know, uh, the area from Pinot's from, which is of course sort of central eastern France, would, uh, would translate to where Sierra is from. And also uh, Viognier. Now Viognier is related to Mondeuse Blanche, so therefore there is a, there is a, a link there. Um, we're not sure if it is a sort of a great grandparent or uh, an offspring, but uh, there certainly is relationship there. And that will give you an idea, of course, of where Sierra and Viognier are found. They're found in the northern Rhone and co-planted together and down in the south of France as well, where you'll find them very commonly grown next to each other. So they are related, completely different in their characteristics. Of course, one is white, one is red, but they are related. Syrah in the vineyard, viticulturally speaking, is a variety that needs warmth and it likes heat. It's often found on soils which will support this. So things like granite and slate and schist are soils which will uh, which will support that kind of warmth, which it really, really likes. Um, so it's often found in uh, either sort of moderate, warm or hot climates through somewhere like the northern Rhone, the southern France, southern Rhone, and then to new worlds like Australia. Uh, Argentina and so on. Um, now the variety itself is uh, is a mid ripener throughout the season, but um, from when the grapes turn colour, the raison, uh, and then to harvest, it's actually a very quick, speedy ripening uh, uh, process. Uh, and then also when to pick, there is also a significant issue about picking. You have to pick quite quickly. There's a short window of opportunity to harvest. Sierra. So it needs to be really carefully looked at uh, and carefully grown. Um, so a bit of a shorter ripening season because of that quick speed after colour change. Um, it's also a vine that will need help with trellising. So you'll normally find it via vertical shoot positioning, something like guillot um, and cordon, because it's a variety which will need stake and, and support. So in the northern Rhone, there's lots of stakes. And TP structures called Eschalas, which in fact will provide that 
structure and that support for the vine because it can actually suffer with wind damage, certainly with younger vines in spring when it's just coming out of its bud burst. Um, also, <clears throat> it's particularly susceptible to chlorosis. So this is the discoloring of the vine or a plant, uh, turning it more to a sort of a yellowish color, but there are other variants of it as well. And that's usually due to a deficit of iron. So that can be a bit of a, a, an issue. Uh, certainly also how it hates therefore linked to that very high lime content soils. Uh, and there are certain rootstocks in fact, that it is not uh, uh, suited to because it will actually uh, um, uh, sort of exponent uh, chlorosis a lot more. Chlorosis is very detrimental because it will stop um, photosynthesis. Uh, and other little issues as, as well, things like uh, towards the end of the year, botrytis bunch rot is an issue. So in uh, humid conditions, this can be a problem. And mites as well are also an issue, as well as uh, Syra has a very interesting disease that can affect it, which turns the leaves red, stopping photosynthesis. And really there isn't a name for it. It's just kind of called the Syra disease. Uh, so that's another issue you may find with it in the vineyard. In the winery, so bringing Syrah into the winery, it is very colourful and quite phenolic. So you'll find that in the skins, there's plenty of colour, this kind of bluish, uh, sort of dark colour. Um, and also lots of phenolic tannic uh, structure in the skins as well. So therefore, Syrah is a remarkably protective grape variety, quite reductive in its nature, and will need to be worked quite oxidatively in the winery. So that will be with things like pump overs, pigeage, breaking the cap, cap management, but also things like oak uh, and, uh, and old oak fermentations and maturations to enable a bit of contact with oxygen. Um, for that uh, same fact though, that sulfur dioxide is not the most used because as a style it is quite well protected. Um, but uh, oxidative working is certainly very, very important. Um, Syrah is very uh, uh, multifaceted uh, and it will be blended or it will be as a single varietal. So from its real considered spiritual homeland, which is the Northern Rhone, it is nearly uh, always a single varietal. Um, sometimes it may have a little bit of white grapes uh, blended into it, like Marsan, Roussan or Viognier in that area. But near enough, it's, it's normally 95% to 100% Syrah for the reds of that area. And then when you go down to the Southern Rhone, it's more commonly blended as a very important blending partner to Grenache, to tame the Grenache alcohol, but also add more kind of darker fruit characteristics, more structure and tannin. Um, so it is blended and it will be blended around the world. In Australia, it's often found with Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, so you will find this variety and, and in South Africa, Pinotage as well. You will find it multi-blended as well. It's a very, uh, a very useful variety. Um, and uh, those blends that can also be co-ferments. So grapes from a block, uh, which there are a number of different varieties, all kind of mixed together and fermented together. This is very uh, typical of the northern tip of the northern Rome. So this is where we find Cote Roti, where you have, uh, by law, and up to 20% Viognier can be blended or co-fermented into the final wine. Very, very seldom happens. Normally it's uh, nothing up to a few percent, uh, but you will find that happening. It's quite a classic. And being related, Syrah and Viognier, they do work quite well. Viognier tends to tame the acid uh, and the tannin of Syrah, adding more aromatic, whereas Syrah tends to, of course, add everything else like the structure. Uh, you do have to be careful of how much Viognier is blended because it can overpower uh, Syrah's quite good structure and acidity. And then the key parts of the world where we find this variety, it's quite fascinating. Actually, Syrah or Shiraz was um, quite uncommon going back about 50 years ago. Pre-1970s, this grape was in quite heavy decline. There was not much of it left around. We really have the Australians to thank for the sort of rebound over the last 50 years of the Syrah Shiraz variety. Um, France really only had a few thousand hectares back, back then and now today, it's nearly in excess of 70,000 hectares under vine, mainly across sort of the Northern Rhone, the Southern Rhone, Languedoc. Languedoc is the biggest area 
for Shiraz, in fact, or Syrah. Um, so a big proponent variety. And really, Syrah um, has been seen as the grape that kind of fills in for good quality blending down in areas like uh, uh, um, uh, Languedoc and Roussillon. Australia, of course, with their big focus on it over the last 40, 50 years, has uh, a big sizable production. It is their leading black variety at tw uh, about 20 odd percent uh, and 45,000 hectares of it under vine. Um, and really, I didn't put anything here specifically where it's from. It's quite famous in South Australia and Barossa, but you will find Syrah or Shiraz, as it's always called in Australia, all over from New South Wales, Victoria, uh, and all the way across to Western Australia and South Australia as well. Spain has really taken the grape to heart in the last 20 years or so, specifically around Castilla-La Mancha, which is the land of windmills and Don Quixote. Uh, and there's a lot of it grown around here. A lot of it's blended into Pagos, uh, but also into more affordable blends between Tempranillo and Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, Argentina, of course, if in doubt, put Mendoza. That's where 75% of Argentina's production comes from. Uh, and it can be commonly blended here with Malbec and Cabernet. South Africa has an amazing emerging scene for the grape and has done for the last sort of maybe 25 years, uh, specifically the Svartland, um, some really good stuff there, but also in the Cape Southern Coast, places like uh, Elgin, for instance, there is a, a nice production and even Stellenbosch. But the Svartland, uh, specifically around Paderberg, uh, so Rebeek uh, and areas um, uh, around Malmesbury, there tends to be some really great, innovative, younger winemakers that are crafting some wonderful wines. So it's a really exciting place. California has a sizable production as well. There's good stuff, certainly around Santa Barbara um, and Washington State we've put there. It's not a big number, but Washington State's quite famous for it, for some quite powerful styles. Uh, up uh, towards the Pacific Northwest. Um, yeah, and there's also a little bit in New Zealand, but only about sort of maybe three, 400 hectares. Um, but uh, it's also turning a lot of heads and has done for the last 10, 15 years, certainly around Hawke's Bay and Gimblet Gravels. The Serra there is rather, rather lovely. So where uh, we've done where it is. Uh, what does it taste like? So the characteristics first of it's you will tend to find Syrah or Shiraz being more fuller bodied uh, with more tannin and some good acids. But in certain soils and expositions and aspects, you can find it a little bit lighter. So in the Northern Rhone, for instance, on more limestone, you find it making a, a brighter, more juicier wine with soft tannins and high, very high acids, which make them quite drinkable. Whereas in the other parts of the Northern Rhone, they tend to be uh, more tannic and more structured. Um, so it is site dependent on what kind of style you will find. Um, Syrah can also, uh, when it over ripens in that short window of opportunity, if it over ripens a bit, it tends to shrivel. Um, you lose quite a lot of water. And as a result, this makes quite dark, even slightly dried fruit, licorice, chocolate style wines as a result, which are in fact quite common in Australia and Barossa. Your typical characters, as the picture would show you, blackberry, black cherry, chocolate, black pepper, licorice, oak, and even hints of menthol and mint notes to it, uh, certainly from places like uh, Australia. They are big, seductive, powerful wines that often accompany big dishes such as cassoulets and stews and pies and beef and all those kind of things and barbecues and so on. So this has been an advanced look at the great variety Syrah or Shiraz through its history, its vineyard and winery capabilities, plus where it's found and what it tastes like. Um, I've been Jimmy Smith from West London Wine School. I hope you've enjoyed the session. I hope you've learned something. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, drop us a line at Wine with Jimmy. Or at the wine school, if you want to find out about the scope of wonderful wine tastings and courses, both at the school and online, we have West London Wine. And then there's South London Wine School. And we also have the bar Streatham Wine House, which is one of the greatest watering holes for wine with over 350 wines on the list in London. It's a really great place, if I do say so myself. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
I will speak to you very soon. Cheers.